welcome to our cybersecurity event. I'm Martin and I'm your host today. And with me, I've got Jesper Mikkelsen from Trend Micro and Peter Glinstrup from Arctic Wolf. And I think that brings me on to the um, uh, last topic of today, because you were talking about that the hackers are waiting for the right time. So what do you see today as the biggest events from hackers? Where are the biggest threats and where do you see it coming from in the future, if you can even predict that? But you could try. So, yes, so the crystal ball again. The crystal ball. <laughs> um, again, my personal opinion on this is we're probably going to see more supply chain attacks, like previous mentioned, like the stuff with SolarWinds uh, and Kaseya, for example. And uh, also more when it comes to open source libraries uh, as well, because I do like open source for sure. I use it myself. I also do development, but that's an easy way into an organization by, you know, either misusing a vulnerability in a really popular module, like again, the Log4j, for example, because that was, you know, utilized in many, many different enterprise applications, not just the, you know, the in-house in build applications, but also applications that they have bought from other vendors. Um, and be absolutely sure the Log4j vulnerability <clears throat> It was misused before we knew about it in, in the public or in the wild. And that's just how it goes. But my personal take on this is we're going to see more of that where third party or open source libraries gets somewhere compromised and in, is then introduced into the organization um, in that way. So the adversaries will get in that direction. But again, to mitigate that, monitoring, 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 and monitoring. Yes, yeah, the same uh, thing. So yes, but uh, Crystal's ball is way better than than my mine Crystal ball is. But uh, what what we see the attackers is actually using that's the 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 lack of solution for the smaller companies. Uh, so the big companies have big budgets, and I mentioned how they see the future. Lack of expertise again, maybe retaining them. But the smaller companies, the SMEs and the SMBs or SMEs or whatever they are called, they are really lagging the. The, the solution to help them out right right now because they got the same problem as the big company. They are they're not maybe that containerized or whatever it is we, we talk about us IT nerds here, but but they want a solution right now. They don't want to wait two years. They can see in the future they know what they need to do, but it's a two year, three year plan. We need to they need to have a solution right now. That's that's my crystal ball. If if we don't solve that conundrum or problem or issue we, we will see a lot of supply chain, man in the middle, whatever they are called, attacks from, from these smaller companies. And that's, I think that's confronting. I, I met a customer a couple of weeks ago where he said, my order book got halved, you know, 50% of my order book got out of my pipeline because the companies that are buying from me asked compliance questions. Do I have a lock? Do I have a seam? Yes, but mentioned no, some product names here. And like the insurance companies, suddenly the customers are asking, hey, do you have cybersecurity under control? What is cybersecurity? That, that's not the answer, right? Because then the sales manager will say, hey, did, did, do you know what happened here? I'm getting killed here. So, so that, that's an issue I, I see in the future, in the near term future, that, that the you know, lazy, bad guys will use and infiltrate all over the place. So, so the SMBs got the same issues, same need as the bigger companies that solve for that. That's also a, a pain or issue that I want to personally contribute to, if it makes sense. Okay. Any final remarks from either of the experts that I've gathered here today? Maybe one comment to, to what Peter just said, because it also pings back to what you said earlier. So imagine that the adversary has uh, you know, picked out a specific target, but it's a Fortune 500 company. They are big and the attackers know, okay, these guys have, you know, probably have like a uh, pretty good control of their IT security and all of their assets and stuff like that. But we know they're using this company over here. In this company, there are 10 guys, but they're using the, their application. So we're gonna use them as a point of entry for the bigger co customer. And as a collateral, all of the small companies customer then gets compromised as well, right? So yeah. I totally agree with what you just said. And, and the super scary part, it has become very easy to be a hacker. So to be very sophisticated in that type of attack, so the small company will have no notion that they are actually there. They will not know it. Suddenly the big boy that they are doing business with is getting attacked. I think it needs to be a lot of root cause work, a lot of consultancy hours to find out, oh crap, this small company just uh, was the 
guys attacking me, but they didn't know about it. But, but I could imagine the meetings, I would, I would love to be part of those management meetings where the companies talk together and they say, you are the fault that I... That's very confrontive, I know. I'm a naughty guy, I'm a very direct dude, but uh, that, that's something I see that, uh, that we need to take care of and try and solve for. Uh, as a thing for a near-term thing. I would like to thank you for a very nice cybersecurity panel. It's been a good discussion. Cool. So what I've heard is monitor, monitor, monitor. True. And we'll do that going forward from now on. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.